Hey bestie, here's how to be that student. This video is sponsored by Grammarly. There is a large amount of information in this video so I highly suggest that you sit through the whole thing because this video includes top tips for students that will set you apart from the rest. Nothing basic like manage your time or get organized, we already know that. These are no-nonsense, step-by-step practical advice with resources and the last tip is your secret to success that no one really talks about. This year, we are done waiting for others or for luck to get us what we want. You create your own luck and become that perfect student. Number one, create your own opportunities. I used to be so confused and a little bit envious of other students who could go on to do things like the national debate competition or participate in the national geographic photography competition and I'm here in my classroom doing nothing. After a few years, I've realized that I need to create my own opportunities if no one is going to give them to me. So here's how I did exactly that and what I accomplished at the end. First, you need to find out what you want to focus on. Pick one skill or interest and laser focus on that. I liked painting and at that time, I wasn't really good at it, bestie, but that's the skill that I chose to nurture. Right now, who do you know is experienced in the thing that you want to focus on? Who can be a reliable role model for you? For me, it was my art teacher. Then, you want to seek guidance from them. I started asking my art teachers for advice on how to improve. I also told them that I am interested in any opportunity that they might know of. This is extremely important. No matter who you're talking to in any industry, whenever you're networking, you want to let the person know that you're serious about participating in any of the opportunities that come up. This is what sets you apart from the crowd and from all my experiences, that is when people start taking you seriously, especially if you follow it up with an email. That little effort and initiative that I took to network with my art teacher has led me to accomplish all these things by the end of high school. So don't wait for opportunities to come to you. Create them yourself. Subscribe and like this video if you're enjoying it so far and be sure to watch till the end because you need to do that one thing first before you start all of this. Next, take advantage of what you have. Take advantage of the resources available to you. Here's one example. Look at these beautiful chemistry notes. They helped me tremendously last year during exam season. Did I make them? No. If you want to save time, don't be afraid to look for notes made by other people or teachers online as a guide. Did I make my own notes? Yes, but I still felt like I didn't quite understand the material after trying many times, so these helped a lot. It's time that we learn to save time where we can so we can spend it on more important things. Another example is help with presentations. So many of you ask me tips for presentations. Did you know that you can use websites to check your speaking time, tone, and vocabulary? You don't need to time yourself over and over again anymore to get the timing right. Here are the marks for my previous presentation. This website is called Grammarly and I'll also be using it for my presentation that's due next month. Here's another example. As students, we write so many essays, emails, and assignments. You're already rushing and these take hours to check and there's nothing more annoying than getting marks cut off unnecessarily just because we got a spelling or two wrong. So why are we struggling anymore when we can check everything in just a few minutes using websites like Grammarly? My marks literally improved after I started using it in secondary school and so many of you are experiencing the same now which I'm so happy about. Grammarly is a must-have desktop app for any student who wants to improve their grades and work efficiently. The free version has grammar, spelling, and punctuation suggestions, but Grammarly Premium will literally rewrite your lengthy sentences and make them clearer, and also give you vocabulary suggestions to replace any overused words with more exciting ones. So if you want to start your academic year right and improve your grades, go to grammarly.com slash faithfilms to sign up for a free account. And if you like all these extra features, upgrade to Grammarly Premium for 20% off. Next, be independent and be smart. My teacher is bad, my textbook is useless, my friends don't like studying. I think that's a good thing and that's not me trying to be positive. 
Let's just say your teacher is bad. That means your entire class or your entire cohort is experiencing the same thing. So life has just given everyone a disadvantage. It's up to you to be smart and turn that into an advantage. For example, when other students are slacking off and blaming the teacher, you use that time to look for information in other resources like YouTube videos, educational websites. That's tip number one on becoming independent. Number two, don't have friends that like to study? Then form your own study group. Go onto Facebook and search your subject, university, school, or national exam. There'll definitely be a few Facebook groups that pop up, so join the active ones. When I was taking my national exam in Malaysia, I joined this Facebook group that had tuition teachers there, workbooks, free notes, webinars, and so much more. It was so useful. That's the easiest way you can find a study group. The third step, do the optional thing. You know how our teachers always say, you can read pages 23 to 26 if you want, it's not compulsory. If it's truly useless, they would have not included that in. My lecturer told me that examiners will always include one or two questions in the exam that they know most students will get wrong. This is to prevent too many students from scoring 100 to even out the results and to handpick those that deserve to get an A+. Our goal is to be able to answer those two questions. Of course, don't try to do everything or you're burned out, but try to handpick those things that you think will deepen your understanding. When you can depend on yourself, it doesn't matter how many obstacles life throws at you or school throws at you because you can overcome them all by yourself. You don't need to wait for someone to hold your hand while you're doing it. Next, here's a simple ticket to success. An advertisement might play in the next few seconds, so if you'd like to support this channel, please do not skip the ad. Thank you! Build a relationship with your teacher or lecturer. Why? You're in the classroom for the first time, but your teacher has been doing the same thing for the last 10, 20, 30 years of your life. If you want tips on how to score for your exam, how to get internships or amazing student opportunities, your teacher is your ticket. Even if you aren't confused by anything, ask something at the end of class. You can ask them to further explain on a point that they made in class or ask them what career opportunities are available for someone who is interested in the subject that they teach. I literally did this yesterday and landed an amazing opportunity next week. After that initial introduction, you want them to remember you, so make it a point to maintain the relationship. In high school or college, I would write down questions that I had during revision and meet up with my teacher every one or two weeks to discuss it with them. In university, I'll try to read up a little bit about the professor and then ask them about their research. Another bonus that I notice is that whenever I ask questions about something that isn't important for exams, they'll usually be like, mm, maybe you shouldn't focus too much on that part. So that's a hint. Lastly, just do this one thing. Unfortunately, nowadays, good grades just isn't enough anymore. People, or more specifically, universities, they want all-rounders. I totally understand if the reason why you want to take part in a lot of competitions and other activities is due to the fact that you want to get into a good university and so you need a good resume. This is my biggest advice. Before you continue participating in competitions or other activities, take part in at least one volunteering activity consistently. Here's why it's so important that you do this. Volunteering shows that you're dedicated, you're passionate about a certain cause, you're empathetic, and so much more. Not only that, volunteering experience is game-changing for any university and college application, especially if you're consistent with it. Many articles, statistics, and interviews have proven this. Try volunteering in an industry that you're interested in if you could. For example, if you plan on studying medicine, try to volunteer at a place like a children's hospital. It'll give you a little taste on what it's like to really work at a hospital and also it'll look amazing on your uni applications. Honestly, my advice is to not try something new right now, but to focus on doing one year of volunteering work if you can. That's all you need as a student right now and you can worry about the extra stuff later. If you've made it this far, comment down below which activity or tip I mentioned in this video that you want to try. Let's work on it together. Be sure to check out the latest YouTube shorts that I posted this week. Like this video, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell and set it to all so you don't miss out on any future uploads. 
Thank you for 858,000 subscribers and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye bye!